Hello ladies and gentlemen, Top Hat Gaming Man here, bringing to the world another video on the exciting subject of the history of gaming. There has been an outrageous amount of different systems released over the years. We have looked at many systems which remain household names to this day, as well as others that are almost completely forgotten now. Today we are going to tread on what I like to consider somewhat middle ground and take an in-depth look at the history of the Fairchild Channel F, one of the world's earliest games consoles and a system that silently revolutionised the video game industry. This ladies and gentlemen is the story of the Fairchild Channel F and sadly why it failed. Yeah. The Fairchild Channel F was released way back in 1976 the system has the distinction of being the first programmable ROM cartridge based video game console, and the first console to use a microprocessor. This predates even the famous Atari VCS, the platform which is often fondly remembered for popularising cartridge based gaming. So if this was the case, what was it that Atari did that turned them into a household name? What Fairchild failed to do? Let's explore the history of this platform in detail. Firstly, by focusing on the company known as Fairchild themselves. Way back in 1896, a gentleman known as Sherman Mills Fairchild was born in New York. Fairchild was born into an extremely wealthy family and had a father who was both a Republican congressman as well as a co-founder and the first chairman of IBM, which went into business in 1911. Sherman Fairchild himself would grow up to become a hugely successful man in his own right, making a success as an American businessman, investor and even inventor. Mr Fairchild was extremely impressive and he would go on to found over 70 different companies. The achievements that would come from these companies are amongst some of the most important of the 20th century, or the entirety of human history for that matter. Fairchild's products would include the likes of the Fairchild FC-1, the first ever US aircraft to include a fully enclosed cockpit and hydraulic landing gear. Later, an aircraft was designed by the company for aerial photography. As a result, in 1935, Fairchild was hired by the US government to do an aerial photograph survey of the United States to track soil erosion and its effects. This partnership with the US government would soon lead on to Fairchild producing many of the aircrafts that would be used by the military during World War II. Perhaps the greatest achievement of all though in the illustrious history of Fairchild was inventing the first synchronised camera shutter and the flash as well as developing further technologies for aerial cameras that would later even go on to be used during the Apollo missions making Fairchild's achievements literally out of this world. Further from all of this, Fairchild Semiconductor Division Company would play a defining role in the development of Silicon Valley and would hold patents for over 30 products including the likes of silicon semiconductors and 8mm home sound motion cameras. Sherman Fairchild himself would die at the age of 74 in 1971 from a long term illness. He was buried within walking distance of the home he grew up in which is now a Masonic Lodge. Fairchild would leave most of his $200 million estate to charity, however he also decided to treat over 50 relatives, friends and former employees to a portion of his life savings. What a nice man. Although Sherman Fairchild was gone, many of his companies lived on, including Fairchild Semiconductor. In 1970, an electronic engineer known as Jerry Lawson would join the company in San Francisco. That year, Jerry would create an early arcade game known as Demolition Derby out of his garage. By the time the mid 70s came around, Lawson would be made Chief Hardware Engineer at Fairchild Semiconductor. During this period, he would also be positioned as the Director of Engineering and Marketing for Fairchild's new video game division. Also, whilst working for Fairchild, Lawson, along with a gentleman known as Ron Jones, were the sole black members of the Homebrew Computer Club a group of early computer hobbyists. This group would include several future industry legends that even included Apple founders Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. It is of note that during this time frame Lawson even interviewed Wozniak for a job position at Fairchild, however made the decision not to hire him. Through Lawson's job role it would lead to the development of the Fairchild Channel F game console, 
This 1976 console was extremely special at the time, as the Channel F was designed specifically to use swappable ROM cartridges. This differed from systems previously, such as the Magnavox Odyssey, which instead used game cards that were composed of printed circuit boards that plugged into the console. So previously, cartridges were the equivalent of switches that let you access already preloaded information on the system's hardware. The main benefits of the ROM cartridges over what was available previously is that it would allow for more complex games that would allow consumers to begin buying whole game libraries, which would provide an entire new revenue stream to console manufacturers, which as we know, is still an ongoing trend to this very day. So Jerry Lawson and his Fairchild Channel F introduced to the world technology that was so useful that it would pioneer the format in which games were stored for many years to come. So, next time you dust off a Japanese game cartridge for your Nintendo 64 or Sega Mega Drive, you have to remember that you have African-American engineer Jerry Lawson to partly thank for all of those years of happiness. The system itself was launched in November of 1976, back then as the Fairchild Video Entertainment System at $170 and used the Fairchild F8 CPU. The F8 was extremely complex in comparison to the usual integrated circuits of the time period and offered more inputs and outputs than regular chips. The F8 was fabricated from a pair of chips to be used together to form a CPU. The system was released internationally under a number of different titles, including in my home of the United Kingdom as the Grandstand Video Entertainment Computer. The system controllers were basically joysticks without bases. The sticks featured large hand grips with a triangular cap on top. The triangular top is movable and functions as an 8-way directional controller. The top could also be pushed down to use as a fire button. The system featured the release of 27 different game cartridges and were termed as video cards. These cartridges were numbered and several were even capable of playing more than one game. The majority of the titles were sold at around the $20 mark. They were yellow in appearance and featured the size and texture of 8-track cartridges. Further to this, the console itself would come with two built-in games, similar to that of the Master System, which would come later. These games included tennis and hockey, which were basically advanced Pong clones. In terms of the graphics the system was capable of, obviously they are pretty basic by modern standards, but leagues ahead of the likes of the Magnavox Odyssey that appeared on the market just a few years prior. Apart from the graphics and the ROM cartridge based media, the system was innovative in other ways too. For example, the F8 processor at the heart of the console was able to produce enough AI to allow for players versus computer matches, which made the device the first in console history capable of such a feat. The console was even the first to ever feature a pause button as well. As we can see, the Fairchild Video Entertainment System pioneered the whole industry in a number of different ways. However, sadly, for Jerry Lawson and the rest of the company, Atari would arrive on the market with their own game console just one year later in 1977. Rather than directly copying the ROM cartridge technology, Atari 2 had been working on developing the exact same technology for quite some time, and their first prototype, known as Stella, had arrived as early as 1975. The arrival of Fairchild's console put pressure on Atari to finish Stella more quickly, and in order to do so, Atari owner Nolan Bushnell decided to sell the company to Warner Communications to provide the funding necessary to get Stella fast-tracked. By November 1977, the product was ready for the market, and the Atari video computer system was born. To combat this new threat and rival in the marketplace, Fairchild would make the decision to rename their video entertainment system for Channel F, with the F standing for fun. The logic behind this was that they felt VES and VCS made the two systems sound too similar. Fairchild decided they wanted to differentiate their product further. Whilst by default the Channel F was the most popular game console of 1976, 1977 though was a different story. Atari sold 400,000 units in just that first year, which dwarfed the 250,000 units the Channel F managed to shift in its entire life cycle. The VCS was just a more attractive option to consumers due to the system featuring twice the RAM of the Channel F, a larger colour palette and the huge marketing and financial backing offered by Warner. Due to these reasons, in 1978, Fairchild Semiconductor made the decision to sell the rights to the system to another company, known as Zircon International Incorporated. 
Once the device came under new ownership, Zircon would choose to release the Channel F System 2, which would offer some minor modifications, such as a slightly different cosmetic design, controller holders in the back of the unit, but most importantly, audio output through the television, as opposed to through the unit itself, like with the earlier models of the Channel F. These changes, though, were not enough to make the system stand out in the ever-changing world of gaming. By this point in history, the Channel F was not the only second generation console on the block, and instead the system now had to compete with the Intellivision, Odyssey 2 and ridiculously popular Atari VCS, a system that would go on to receive 30 million lifetime unit sales. Despite the system's failings in being able to compete with its competitors, the system's impact on gaming today is unquestionable, with many game console traits being first established with the rise of the Channel F. The Channel F is responsible for being the first console with a microprocessor, the first system to feature ROM cartridges, and the first console to feature AI computer opponents, all in all still impacting how we experience gaming today. So overall, as highlighted earlier in the video, we have a lot to be thankful for when it comes to the Fairchild Channel F. Yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, that was the story of the rise of the Fairchild Channel F and why ultimately it failed in the marketplace. If you enjoyed today's content, please do not forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the notification bell to get weekly content like this straight to your phone or other multimedia devices. Let me know in the comment section which system story you would like to hear me cover next. Finally, my channel Top Hat Gaming Man is partly funded by the fantastic support I receive from my amazing Patreon benefactors, who continuously raise the bar and go above and beyond to preserve this channel's existence. So shout outs to Carl Johnson, Jizuko Biyashi, JD Robbins, Greg Hooper, Sebastian Great, Synth Spaces, Kevin Fahaley, Andrew Bazanski, Edward O'Reilly, Tom Elliott, Quang DX, Spongebob Matt B, Michael Baker, Hans Christian, The Computer Man, and all of my other Thank you for changing my life. Ooh.